Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well today joining me in my mother's Lexus NX. I've just picked it up to go and take it for a wash and fill the tank full of fuel. And I've just had a call from work and I've bought one of my least favourite cars of all time. Straight away you'll be thinking that that's a Nissan Duke, but there's actually a car that I hate even more. It's a Citroen C4 Picasso and they are hateful things. I detest them. Generally speaking, it's the same sorts of people who buy these as the Nissan Duke. Only these people tend to have a stronger hatred for birth control. What this is essentially is a van in which you can carry around your unruly brood. The children in the back tend to vomit, defecate, throw food, crush food into the carpet, spill milk. There are usually a couple of hairy dogs in the boot as well, just to make the whole mixture a bit more potent. But that isn't my main issue with them. I can see that they're very practical, so I do understand the appeal. No, my main issue is that they're so unreliable and they're normally bought by people who don't know a dipstick from a drive shaft, so they're just never maintained properly. They're way too complicated, they're not built well, they always have a silly electronic handbrake in the button somewhere up here and that always seems to fail. They have loads of complex electronics which always seem to fail and there's always a flurry of warning messages. I guarantee I'll have several on this, something like ABS system fault or depollution system fault. That's a common one. It just makes me shudder thinking about them. I hate them. And hate's a strong word, but I don't think it goes far enough to describe my, my dislike of these cars. This particular car I haven't seen yet. Actually, no, that's not true. I have seen this car from a distance. Last weekend it was at the garage being traded in, and I happened to drive past and nip in for something, and I saw it parked outside. So I have seen it from probably 20 metres away. And that's the kind of distance I like to keep between me and the Citroen C4 Picasso at all times. Anyway, I know two things about it. I know that it's a 2007, and I know that it's in a sky blue sort of colour. Oh, I also know that it's quite cheap. I paid just £300 for this, so I'm not expecting a, a very nice example, but we'll see. What I'm actually hoping for is that it's completely buggered so I can scrap it and keep another turd off our roads. I think I'll be doing everybody a favour. They're quite a big, heavy car, so for its weight alone, I should get most of my £300 back. I don't know this for sure, but it's probably semi-auto. A lot of them were, and they're absolutely garbage. You get whiplash every time it changes gear. They're useless. What's stupid is that Citroen should know better. These cars were marketed as being very cheap to run. I think they're only 20 or 30 pounds a year to tax. They'll do 50 or 60 miles per gallon. They were targeting not very well-off people. They were targeting your average working class family. So why the hell did they make them so complicated and expensive to fix? Wouldn't it have been better to equip it with a traditional handbrake that was more reliable? Wouldn't it have been better to equip it with a standard automatic gearbox with a torque converter, rather than an automated manual which always breaks? Wouldn't it have been better to make these cars less complex so the people who actually bought them could afford to run them and service them and maintain them? Then it could have been a cheap and cheerful workhorse for the average working family. But no. Anyway, let's go and have a look, shall we? Well, we're here. It's quite a good colour. It's a Manchester City blue. The headlamps can do with a buff. It looks quite dirty, but for £300, that looks like a bit of a bargain, actually. In fact, I go as far as to say it looks a bit too good to scrap, unfortunately. A little bit of paint chipping and flaking on the front bumper. The front number plate's cracked. It's an F plate, which means it's from the Fens, which is the east side of the UK. Central East, is it? That sort of area. The wheels want a good clean. The front fog lamp's got water in it. Fairly standard, really, isn't it, for one of those? Right, before we look around it, let me do a quick vehicle history check. So, as always, I'm going to go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which in this case is Foxtrot Papa 07 Tango X-Ray Kilo. This is currently checking databases in dozens of countries. It's checking millions of cars to make sure it's never been involved in any accidents, never had a mileage rollback. It's checking to make sure there's no outstanding finance on it. And as quick as that, the report is ready. So, view report. That is a Citroën C4. If you want to do one of these checks for yourself, and I urge you to do so before you hand over any cash, then click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK and you get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. The mileage is fine. No fraud was disclosed. Ah, right. This is interesting, actually, because it doesn't really matter at 300 quid, does it? So, no mileage fraud's been disclosed. It's never been stolen. But this vehicle has been damaged. It has been involved in a recorded accident. I didn't know that. But on the bright side, there's no outstanding finance on it. It was manufactured in January 2007, but it wasn't registered in the UK until July 2007. It also shows the maintenance it's had as well. I can't imagine it's had much, to be honest, but it had some maintenance in 2009. It had its first MOT in 2010. It had another MOT in 2011, and there were some advisory items already on a four-year-old car. Just shouldn't happen, should it? Uh, more advisory, item, uh, advisory items every single year. 
It currently has an MOT until March, so not long to go. Near side front suspension arm pin or bush worn. Outside front outer drive shaft CV boot severely deteriorated. Rear brake pads wearing thin. Oil leak but not excessive. Offside front suspension arm pin or bush worn. And front brake disc worn. Lovely stuff. So it's never been stolen, that's all clear. And the mileage at the last MOT was 97,000 miles. Not too high, is it really, for one of those? Let's get to the juicy part then, the damage. So it was damaged in November 2018. Now the damage, it was recorded in the UK as a category N write-off. So, now in the UK they changed the way that they describe these, so there's either a cat N now or a cat S. Category N means non-structural, category S means structural. We'll have a look around it actually and see if I can work out where the damage was. Sometimes on these car vertical checks it can actually show you photographs of the damage it sustained, but on this occasion it hasn't done. I've used it in the past and it's actually showed me photographs of the damage, so it can be really handy. The approximate market value of this car when the seller is a company is £1,750, or as a private party, £1,489. Let's go down to the spec and equipment. So it's a Citroen C4 Estate 2006 1.6 litre diesel. Mm. Automatic. It doesn't really matter. I'll show you how bad these autos are. We've got a checklist of things to look out for. So DPF failure standard turbo failure due to oil starvation lovely stuff short clutch life on the automatics that's because they're an automated manual and they are garbage premature throttle butterflies wear don't even know what that means wiring looms can corrode and break where the hatch meets the body beware of head gasket failure lovely stuff right let's go and have a look around it then okay then let's go and have a look Well, we've only got one key, but on the bright side, it still actually works. Just spotted some corrosion here on the bottom of the door. We have got a dynamo. Not sure if that's been made by that magician. Run about five mil of tread though there. Apart from the bit of corrosion on the door, the bodywork looks okay. It's a good colour. Uh, on the front here we've got a Z ZT1000 made by a company called Zet. Zetex. That's a new one on me, I've never heard of that. We do need some new front brake discs there. The wheels are all curbed and corroded. Some scuffs here on these big horrible wing mirrors. I can't imagine Pablo Picasso signing off this design, can you? Hideous, absolutely hideous. That reminds me actually when I touched that, the wing's plastic. Let's try and work out where this had a bump then. Straight, well, straight away I'm thinking the front plate's cracked. It might have had a front end. It has actually because that's, someone's painted this and then it started to peel. You can see the colour difference as well, can't you? And the fact that that doesn't meet properly. So I would say it's had, and you can see the runs in the lacquer. Can you see that on the camera? I'm not sure. Well, yeah, based on the peeling paint and the runs in the lacquer, that's definitely had a, probably a minor front end whack, to be honest. I wouldn't have thought it would have broken the, the lights because the lights look original, that are all worn, need a buff. That's all bent, I don't know whether that's normal or not. We've got the horrendous panoramic roof there. I don't know why you need more sunlight inside a hideous car like that. Have we got another matching Z-Tex? Oh, we do. Look at that. Z-Tex. Someone in the comments now is going to tell me that they're actually made by Pirelli and they're very good tyres, but I doubt it. Finger marks here. We've got a matching dynamo on that side. It looks like it's had more paint down this side. You see the, the difference in colour between that panel there, that wheel arch and that back door. 50 shades of blue this, isn't it? Well, the actual tyre tread depths aren't bad. Some rust there. Yeah, that's definitely had paint, that panel. It's appalling. We've got matching front and rear number plates, central car and van sails. Some dents in the tailgate. Okay. 
Well, my central locking works. Oh, it's a VTR Plus. Wow. And inside we've got a, why is it beeping at me already? Got a very saggy seat there, saggy bottom. Smells of cigarettes, general filth, really. Oh, that's what I always hated about, ow. What a clever design that is, isn't it? Stick the dash out so you whack your shin on it every time you get in. That's what I always hated about these, the fact they put the climate control there. It's in the last place you'd look. Auto, look at that, hideous. Hideous. We've got a cool box here. Some cup holders, oh, we've got four cup holders. I'll tell you what, I'm slowly changing my mind about these. Cup holder central. Got a cover here, so that nobody steals the, uh, the no, no brand radio. Just what you want. What currency is that? Quarter dollar, a quarter dollar. All yeah, right, okay. From South Carolina, the Palmetto State. Very good. Fairly well traveled, this car, isn't it? Got a jelly belly thing there. Even with all these air fresheners, it still stinks. Look at this. Who thought that was a good idea? Why would you need to see more daylight? Especially in England, look at the gray sky. Oh yeah, let's see more of that. We've got glove compartments everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Feel the quality as well. What a quality, quality item. All yeah, right. More good quality there. We've got Citroen breakdown assistance. The key card. People always lose those, actually. I'm quite pleased we've got that. Not that it makes any difference, really, but... Uh, it had a service in 2009. That's the one that Car Vertical told us, wasn't it? Uh, somebody called Steve certifies that the service was done. Cheers, Steve. Uh, and that's just the... I thought that was a service book. Oh, what have we got in here? We've got some sort of OBD tracker, is it? I don't know. Diesel cars, nitro. God knows. Got some pens. That's to whiz out the radio. In fact, I might keep those, they're handy. But I'd say they're not for that. Or maybe they are. Might use those in a minute to poke my own eyes out. Is there any service history? Nope, I'd say not. You know what, this actually isn't that bad. They're normally in far worse condition than this. Those back seats don't look too abused. Let's go and have a closer look. Well, it really just wants a good vacuuming, really. Got a spare door handle there, detachable. Oh, look at this. Might be in business class, isn't it? Joking apart, they are very good family cars because you get three independent individual seats. So they'll take three car seats and that's, it's one of the few cars that'll do that. Ah, we've got some missing, I don't know what should go there, but some kids have their foot through that, haven't they? Yes, that's exactly what's happened there. We got any treasures in the boot? If I could be bothered to break a car, you'd get loads for this in bits. The parcel shell's probably worth 50 quid. Toolkit. Well, jack. Locking wheel nut. I don't think anyone's stealing these wheels, do you? A bit optimistic, that Citroen, if you ask me. Let's have a look under the bonnet then. It's French, so I've got to open the passenger door. There wasn't much resistance there. Let's see if I can see any damage. 
Well, there is loads of oil residue everywhere here. Oil or fuel. It's all a bit grim, isn't it, that? There is seepage and weepage everywhere. I can't see any damage to the to the chassis legs. I think something's been made in Morocco there. Yazaki Morocco, whatever that is, I don't know. Yeah, there's no damage there. It must have had quite a mild nudge then, really, in order to write this off. But then, I guess, they might have estimated the damage was £800, maybe, and at that time, the car might have only been worth two grand, so they'd have written it off anyway. Should we fire up this bad boy? See why it's peeping. Oh, there we go. I've not even started it, and handbrake faulty. Look at that. What an absolute lemon. This, by the way, you see this here? Peugeot's had this as well. You could buy, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you could buy like some sort of air freshener kit for it and pop it in the dash somewhere and then it would just spray out air freshener. I guess to camouflage the smell of your children's vomit in the back. Should we fire her up? Well, it's telling me it's zero degrees outside and it isn't. Oh, gearbox fault as well. Everything's faulty on this. Why won't it start? Just put it in neutral, that might help. Oh yes. Lovely stuff. So we've got a faulty radio by the sounds of it. No signal at all. Yeah. Climb oh there. Oh dear. Can you <laughs> We've got a bit of a misfire, guys. Let's turn this. This is shaking like a... ESP fault, ABS fault, engine light, handbrake fault, gearbox fault. What an absolute turd. Well, I think we're gonna scrap this because particulate filter, additive level, fog lamp bulb faulty, okay. Risk of ice? I don't think so, it's about 12 degrees. What a lemon. Right, I've selected auto. I quite like that, I quite like the lever, but what it's connected to is just terrible. And also you get this steering wheel where the center never moves. Don't know why they thought that was a good idea. We've got paddles here, in case you're feeling like Schumacher. Are we in drive then? Are we in drive? Why doesn't it tell me? Oh, there's not Huh? I don't know whether that's really... Oh, there we go, right. That button's broke, though. I don't know whether you saw that, but it just collapsed. Hang on, let me put this, put this camera around. I think I might need my seatbelt for this. How's that? Can you see me? Preparing myself for whiplash here. Right. Cool, calm. Can you hear that? Why did they make a car like this? It's got very knocking suspension. In fact, should we take this on a longer drive? Just for a laugh. It's beeping to tell me to put my seatbelt on. In case you're wondering, this seatbelt what an absolute nail. Has it got reverse gear? Oh, it does. Let's take this on a longer drive then. I don't know whether this handbrake's gonna work. Yeah, okay. I've just opened the gate, so it'll have to be quick. Man break off or not? There we go. Bit of wheel spin. What an absolute turd. This needs scrapping.
Very good. Nice. Nice subtle change there. Quite quick on the old paddles. That beeping would get irritated, wouldn't it, after a while? Especially on a long journey. Oh, hang on a minute. I was blaming... Oh, no, 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 no. I thought for a second I had it in manual mode. I thought that's why it wasn't changing gear. There's really no life in this, is there? What I was thinking of doing was to give it to my mate who buys and sells cheap bangers to see if he could do anything with it, but I think I'll just scrap it, save everyone the, the stress. I can, I can smell exhaust fumes as well, which can't be good. Pulls all right there. Little kick down there. Probably quite a dangerous car this. I've got an ABS light on, ESP light on, the suspension's knocky, once front brake discs, the gearbox is uh, buggered. The only thing between me and the road are some ZTEC X tyres. Not sure what they're like in the wet. No, it's not changing up at all. I want fourth, give me fourth. May the fourth be with you. Yeah, so it won't go into fourth. Third is as good as it gets. This, by the way, guys, is a 102,000 mile car. Should be more life in it than that, shouldn't there? The good people over at Citroen really want flogging. Right, well, I think before I stray too far and it breaks and I've got to walk back, I think I'll turn around and then I shall call the scrap people. I assume this is a six speed box, so we've only got half the gears. This is one of the worst things I've driven in some time. We get fourth. Why no fourth? I'm intrigued to see what I'll get for it in scrap. It's quite a heavy car, this. I've given £300 for it, spent nothing on it. Depends on the price of metal, doesn't it? I don't know about you, but I've now got a headache. That's not going to make things any better, is it? Did you see that Range Rover Sport then, by the way? That sums up Range Rover Sport ownership. It had an urban kit on it. It was in like a matte green and it was just dumped on the curb, on the curb so nobody could get past. You wouldn't catch the owner of a full-size Range Rover doing something like that, would you? You all having a good weekend? What are you all up to? I'll be honest, mine could be better. an absolute lemon. This is why I work every day so I don't have to drive something like this. At least it comes fully equipped with a cooler box so I can keep my sandwiches nice and cold. Perfect while I'm waiting for the RAC isn't it that? This is this is painful. You know what's funny? Actually not funny, tragic really. Every single Citroen C4 I've ever bought has been like this. They're all this bad. Dare I get out? Do I trust the handbrake? Enough to be quick, aren't it? I can hear now the engine's on. I can hear one of the injectors chuffing. You can hear it like. Oh no. I think, the, I think the handbrake's locked on here. Oh, please don't do this to me. Couldn't have broken down in a worse place. Right in, the, right in the entrance to the car park here. I can't leave it here. Right, let's let's start again. Oh, it stinks of diesel. Just wait. Give it ten seconds to cool down, and then I'll try the handbrake again.
Right then, Citroen. Don't mess me around anymore. We're disengaged, thank heavens for that. Right, I don't want to be in this any longer, so I'm going to call the scrap people and see if they'll come out on a weekend and pick up this absolute lemon. I'll catch up with you shortly. Right, well, I've just got off the phone with the scrap people and they're going to come and collect it tomorrow. They pay me £320 for it on a bank transfer, which, to be honest, I'm over the moon with. £20 profit. Way! Yes, get in. But it hasn't done anything to change my views on Citroen C4 Picassos, especially the semi-autos. They're always like that. When people ask me why I've got a bias against French cars, that is the reason. Most of them are absolute rubbish. So on that bittersweet note, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below. I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.